and welcome to this conference championship edition of Big Game Bound. I'm Chris Hagan. Only four teams remain after a thrilling divisional round of the playoffs. Two games this weekend, and it starts in Kansas City. The defending AFC champion Chiefs, a touchdown favorite over the up-and-coming Bengals. We look forward to the challenge of playing Cincinnati. We know they're a heck of a football team. You know, Zach does a, a great job with that with the with the team. They play hard and aggressive. Um, uh, again, I look forward to playing here uh, at Arrowhead. Um, I know, and I know it'll be rocking. Uh, Arrowhead's pretty loud. Uh, I don't think you can get around that, and uh, I'm sure it'll be pretty loud this weekend. Uh, they're a great football team. They're, they're coming in, uh, trying to trying to win a, a big football game. Uh, but I'm glad we're at Arrowhead and we have a chance to use our crowd to our advantage on, on trying to find a way to get a win. Now let's get the Bengals side of things with our Jack Pole over in Ohio. Jack, it's been an incredible ride thus far. Why stop now? <laughs> that is the Bengals attitude exactly. In fact, that was the sentiment in the locker room where Joe Burrow addressed the media just minutes after beating the Titans. And he said, I am sick and tired of the underdog moniker. And it's not why not us. He said, it is us. So this team has a load of confidence. Yeah, you think about the skill positions, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, even the place kicker. These guys are not lacking in any confidence. In fact, they have that swag, as the kids like to say. And it's kind of like they don't know what they don't know when it comes to playoff football. Right. And in fact, I go back to the post game from the Titans and uh, they admitted that. They said, we just don't know any better. We're just, you know, <laughs> Jamar Chase was saying, we're just playing ball. We're just, we're having fun. This is what we do. And uh, I honestly don't believe they're afraid of any team. I honestly believe that they believe, you know, some teams will fake it. Some guys will fake it. I believe this Bengals team uh, is totally bought in that uh, they can beat anybody at any time. I know each game is different, but you have to think a young team, an up and coming team, with that confidence, they have to know, hey, we've played this team before and we've beaten them, and that's something they'll carry on the road with them this weekend. Well, there's no doubt, and the Bengals have been uh, sweep happy this year. They beat the Steelers <laughs> twice. They beat the Ravens twice. Then they had to beat the Raiders twice the second time in the playoffs. So the only other team they played twice this year was the Browns, and the Browns swept them. So from the Bengals' vantage point, we beat them the first time. We've proven we can beat them the second time, and that's a tall order because uh, this game is going to be at Arrowhead, but uh, they certainly believe that. What can you say about Joe Burrow as a franchise quarterback, as a leader? Obviously, a tremendous uh, national championship season with LSU. He comes in the league, has that horrific injury, and then even last week, he withstands nine sacks and somehow still has the moxie to go out there and lead him to a win. He just has, I guess you'd say, that it factor that so few players do in this league. Well, you know, it's true because, you know, he's getting beat up. He was sacked three times six minutes into the game. I mean, they, they, you know, the Titans made their presence known quickly. So he's not throwing, you know, the uh, surface pro. He's not yelling at people. He is keeping calm after the game. He didn't throw the lineman under the bus. He, he uh, in fact, took the blame for a lot of the sacks himself. Uh, and, again, I, I think it's not what you say, but how much you believe in what you say. And that's what makes Joe Burrow so different than everyone else. He is even keeled. I mean, nine sacks, no big deal. Just another day in the park. Just get up there and start sl uh, slinging it and, and win the game. So uh, I think his leadership is equal to his talent as a quarterback in the league. And his what he has brought to a, a franchise like Cincinnati where – they just couldn't get out of their own way. Even during the Andy Dalton years, the, the way they lost those five playoff games were just, it was just one bad thing after another. And Cincinnati's done more, did more in eight days than they did the previous 31 years. And in fact, winning the road playoff game was the first time they had ever done that. And it really all begins with Joe Burrow. I mean, it is, uh, and the irony about him and uh, Jamar Chase is that had Burrow not gotten injured, you talked about that injury, it's likely the Bengals may have eked out one or two more wins. I think that's fair to say. And they never would have gotten Jamar Chase. So even this injury kind of worked out in his favor in the long run, at least by getting Jamar Chase, who has been the, the weapon that has been the difference maker for Burrow this year. Yeah, you talk about an X factor. You're going to have to put up some points. Obviously, you see uh, the Bills had the firepower to kind of go score for score with the Chiefs. You'd expect the Bengals to have to do the same. How can they get Chase even more involved than he already is? Because it seems like whenever he gets the football, something big could happen. Well, there's no question about that. I mean, and for him to uh, 
to duplicate what he did the last time against Kansas City at uh, Paul Brown Stadium. It's, it's pretty unlikely, and the Bengals are certainly not expecting that. Even if he gets half as much yardage, it's a, still an incredible game. So uh, the good news is, is I really believe Joe Burrow and Zach Taylor, their head coach, is a uh, you know, the, the old cliche, give what the defense, uh, take what the defense gives you. And the Bengals have some pretty talented. I mean, T. Higgins is a really good wide receiver. And Tyler Boyd is a veteran in that room, and, and he has made some huge catches this year. They're not the flashy big playmaker that Jamar Chase has proven to be, but they are high-quality receivers. And then you throw in C.J. Uzama at tight end, who has made one big catch after another in some of the biggest spots during the regular season. And you've got a lot of guys that if they do shut down Jamar Chase, uh, and I'm sure the Chiefs are not going to give up 200-plus yards, three touchdowns to him again. That would be something if they did. But uh, the Bengals have a lot of weapons, which is in, in years past. And, and, and Joe Mixon has become sort of a force out of the backfield. He's made a lot of catches, which they're basically long handoffs, but that's something they didn't do until really the last uh, maybe third of the season. And last thing for you, Jack, let's talk about the other side of the football. Can that Bengals D make a play here or there, maybe get a turnover, at least slow down that Chiefs juggernaut at least enough times for the Bengals to have a chance? Well, the Bengals lead the league in turnovers over, I believe, the last five or six weeks, and that has been a difference. And really, last week, they set the tone. I mean, they picked off uh, Ryan Tannehill on their very first offensive play of the game, and ironically, their very last offensive play of the game. They got them twice. So this has been a team that gives up a lot of yardage, um, but they certainly haven't been giving up a lot of touchdowns. They have held the Raiders when they needed to on that goal line stand and that opening wild card playoff game. They got the big interception, a turnover to, to end that game. They basically do the same thing to the Titans and, and march down the field and get it. So the Bengals defense, when Ogunjobi went down and they weren't going to have him the rest of the way, a lot of people were worried, but they've had a lot of guys step up. They have some veterans on that team. And uh, uh, this is a defense that, I mean, I don't know how much they're going to slow down the Chiefs, but I don't know what defense would. Weren't the Bills number one in every category? So the Bengals are a far cry from being number one in every category, a middle defense. But, but opportunistic, they can get turnovers. At least they've proven that in the last couple of months. Well, they certainly have a look of, dare I say, a team of destiny we shall see this weekend. Jack, thanks for the time, and we'll talk to you down the road. All right, thanks so much. In the NFC, it's round three between division rivals the Rams and Niners. LA a three and a half point favorite at SoFi Stadium. Be able to play at home SoFi, Mr. Kroenke's house that he built an NFC championship. You know, couldn't be more appreciative of the support we felt from our fans throughout the whole year. I thought the Monday night atmosphere was electric and looking to create something and even that much more against the NFC, you know, for the NFC championship. And um, really grateful for those Rams fans. Hold on to those tickets, and uh, it'll be much appreciated. But uh, our guys are looking forward to putting on a good show against a great opponent. But, um, you know, can't wait to be able to do it. And don't sell those tickets. Now let's get some Niners perspective with our Kate Rooney out there in Cali near the practice field. Kate, did you believe the Niners would still be playing as we enter this championship Sunday? There were many times this season that I definitely did not believe it. Uh, week three comes to mind, that loss against Seattle comes to mind, and virtually every time the Niners have taken the field in this postseason, most of the pundits were predicting that they would not be the team emerging with the W. I think you just have to give them a lot of credit now. People are starting to think maybe they do have a chance to win this. They've proven they can win in lots of different ways. So I guess you could say I've drunk the Kool-Aid a little bit. Now I believe that they deserve to be here and that it's reasonable to think that maybe they could win on Sunday and reach the Super Bowl too. I believe it was like a two and four start for San Fran and then really had to battle their way into the playoffs, kind of a last minute deal. They make it in, but sometimes it's all about just getting in, having a shot, getting hot at the right time. What's been going well for these road warriors over these past two weeks? Yeah, a lot of things have been going well, but I think you got to go back to the basics with these Kyle Shanahan teams, right? It's all about the run game. They've been doing that so incredibly well. Uh, only Kyle Shanahan can take a prolific wide receiver and turn him into the one of the best running backs in the league. Then you've got this rookie, a six-round draft pick, Elijah Mitchell, who is finding gaps left and right, making teams really scratch their heads. On the other side of the ball, the defense is performing as well, if not better, than it did in their Super Bowl season under Robert Sala. D'Amico Ryan is probably going to get himself a head coaching job out of this season because the depth that they have on that defense, the way that they've been able to uh, create 
plays, even when they're dealing with some of the bare bones members of guys who've just been called up from the practice squad is really impressive. And I think they're definitely a team that a lot of people don't want to play. You, of course, have to get a shout out to special teams too, which is something that has not been going well this season. But special teams essentially won the game for them in Green Bay when things were not going well in those two other areas I just mentioned. So clearly all three phases can step up when needed. And certainly that's what they're hoping will happen again on Sunday. Yeah, it's crazy when you think about how a, a game can change on a dime, especially in the postseason. Now, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo from afar, all season long and here lately, I've heard 10 different teams he'll be playing for next year, and his time is over. It's time for him to go, but he's living in the moment. He's right here right now, and he's on the verge of another Super Bowl appearance. Well, what is the state of his affairs right now when it comes to being that franchise quarterback? Well, Jimmy said from the beginning that, hey, it didn't feel good to get that phone call, that they were trading everything in the world to – take Trey Lance with the third overall pick, but he had nothing he could do other than strap on his cleats and play his best possible football. So he's attempted to do that all season long. One thing that really works in Jimmy Garoppolo's favor is that he has the full confidence of his teammates. The guys in the locker room absolutely love him. They've absolutely had faith that he's the right guy to leave him there. But I do think that he is playing for something a little bit extra, not just a win with the 49ers. He's playing for his future in the NFL because you have to think that even if they get to the Super Bowl, even if they win a Super Bowl under Jimmy Garoppolo, given the way that you mortgage the future to take Trey Lance, you got to start thinking about playing Trey Lance right away. So I am in the camp that this is Jimmy's last season with the 49ers, no matter what happens. But I think he is playing with a level of confidence because he knows that not only does he have the, the potential of winning here, but it is going to make an impact when you look at the rest of his career. Well, we've seen the Niners be underdogs and go in there and shock the world on consecutive weekends. They'll won't be shocking many people, not me either, if they beat the Rams. They've already beaten them twice. Do you take anything from those first two matchups as far as maybe uh, you've got something It's a good matchup between these two teams for the Niners? Yeah, you do. I think these teams just know each other so well. That makes for great, straightforward football. That's pretty much what they've been saying all week. Last week, the 49ers said that that Green Bay game was a pivotal point in their season. It's when they really had to take stock and reassess. But when I look back at the season, I think the turning point was that convincing win over the Rams, that 31-10 win that no one expected them to win that game. I think that really gave them the confidence that they're playing with now. And you look at the players that the Rams have brought on this season from Von Miller to Odell Beckham Jr. The 49ers have said, hey, no big deal. We've got answers for all those guys. They've proven that they can do it. They've done some of the things that they do well, like run the ball and stick to uh, hardcore defense in the trenches. But then they've also run a few trick plays here, like when Debo Samuel threw that touchdown to Jawan Jennings last time out. So I don't think they're afraid to open up anything in Kyle Shanahan's bag of tricks. And I think it's that confidence that is really what is going to be able to maybe get them over the hump here this week as well. I'm ready for Debo to make a 50-yard field goal this week, Kate. Hey, good stuff on the Niners beat. Perhaps we will see you soon out there at the Super Bowl. But in the meantime, enjoy this weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Should be fun. Thanks for having me. And now it's time for our weekly visit with Jarrett Payton up in Chicago, the son of sweetness. JP, you could have gone 4-0 last week. You could have easily gone 0-4. As it is, you went one and three, but man, what a divisional round of ball games. Could you believe what you saw over those two days? No, Chris, it was amazing and some of the best football I've ever had a chance to see. So going one and three, I'll take that. I'm going to redeem myself this week. Well, you know, as we made the picks last week, you were like, you were like either way on so many of the games and that's the way it happened on the field. That's what happens this time of year. Let's go ahead and get started with Championship Sunday. We'll start in the AFC. The Bengals, you've been high on them all season long, but they'll be playing at Kansas City against those Chiefs. Yeah, I think the hardest part is seeing, you know, how they fared against Tennessee and, you know, that Tennessee defensive line going after that Bengals offensive line. Joe Burrow sacked nine times. They still found a way to be able to get the dub. I think it's going to be hard, though. Kansas City right now, though, Chris, is playing at a different level. At any time that they can score in bunches, and when you got Hill and you got Kelsey, you got a run game that can figure it out. Listen, they're just too crazy. And Patrick Mahomes right now playing at the level that we thought that he would play at the beginning of the year. Listen, you're going to have your ups and downs during the season. But it's when you get to this part of the season, when you play your best football. And right now, Kansas City's been there two years in a row. They're going to make it three. I think you got the Chiefs going on to Super Bowl Sunday. Nine times. He was sacked nine times, but Burrow kept coming back for more. 
Uh, they've beaten the Chiefs before this season, but you think at overhead that'll be a little bit too much, and you got the Chiefs advancing to a third straight Super Bowl. Good stuff there. In the NFC, talk about a rematch. You got the Niners and the Rams, division rivals at SoFi Stadium. One of them will play there uh, this round, and one of them will play in that same stadium come Super Bowl Sunday. To me, this is the hardest game to pick, Chris. Like, honestly, I mean, I, 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 last week I picked against the 49ers. Their special teams came up big for them to be able to help win the game against the Packers to advance the Sunday. So I, I'm just trying to figure out. If you look at what San Francisco is all about, smash mouth, they're bully ball, they're going to try to bully you down. They're going to find a way to be able to run the ball consistently. I just don't know if it's this week. I just don't know if you can go up against what the Rams are doing on offense and defense. I love what they're doing. Matthew Stafford is playing out of his mind as well. And when you have a guy that hasn't been to the big game before, this is his opportunity. And you got Aaron Donald on the other side. I just think that that pass rush for the Rams is going to be a little bit too much. They're playing at home, even though it's going to be a condensed stadium. I know they're not trying to sell a lot of tickets to those 49er fans, but that place <laughs> is going to be rocking. And I definitely think this is the chance. Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald and company are going to chance to be able to go back to the big game in Stafford for the first time. The Rams, they get the win over the 49ers. So here's a recap of JP's picks. Peyton's picks are just two this week. He likes the Chiefs at home against the Bengals. He'll take the Rams also at home against the Niners. And even though, JP, you went one and three last week, you're still five and three for the postseason. You're above 500. You'll look to stay there here on Championship Sunday. Best of luck. And then this time next week, we're talking about a Super Bowl matchup. Season goes by quick, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Chris. Let's see if these games can kind of live up to the same hype as last weekend. Probably not, but still good football. And that will do it for us today. For Jared Payton, Kate Rooney, Jack Pohl, and producer Phil Nardiello, I'm Chris Hagan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Big Game Bounce.